Well, Amanda. Clemson is the national champions once again, the second time in three years. This one as historical as any. They are now 15-0, the first team in the history of college football in the modern era to accomplish that feat. Clemson has done something that no team and major college football has done since the late 1800s. This senior class, and we just heard from Christian Wilkins and Cleland Farrell and uh, Austin Bryan, all these guys have now accounted for 55 wins in their collegiate careers. That's the most in college football history. To say this is a historical accomplishment is an understatement. Think about all the great Clemson players that just played their final game. Christian Wilkins, Hunter Renfro. These guys are leaving a legacy, and they did it by beating Alabama for the second time in three years for the national championship. The playoff rivalry that we've been talking about four straight years, now knotted up at two. And when you look at what the young guns did on offense tonight, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Ross, T. Higgins, Travis Etienne, all these guys are coming back next year. There is so much reason for optimism for this Clemson football program into this game of course Trevor Lawrence not making the start for the Tigers for the first time this year very quickly the storyline turned twofold first the freshman quarterback making his first start for Clemson DJ Uyunglele very quickly it turned into DJ Uyunglele he was sensational leading Clemson back to a 34-28 win over Boston College on the other hand the defense showed many cracks in the armor the Tigers find a way to clamp down and come back after trailing for the first time this season, not only trailing, but by double digits. Clemson claws back the Tigers, now 7-0, heading into a mega showdown next week at Notre Dame. And we are less than two hours away from the I-85 rivalry resuming at Bank of America Stadium. You can see we are live in Charlotte. The Panthers hosting the Atlanta Falcons. Both teams looking to bounce back with a win. Welcome to the Fox Carolina Football pregame special. Hey there, I'm Aaron Cheslock. For the next hour, we'll get you set up for the NFC South Clash, set to kick off right here just after 8 o'clock tonight. Here's a look at how the matchup looks on paper. Two different stories here. The... Falcons expected to compete for the division lead before the season. Tons of stars on this team, but a disappointing start. Just 1-6. Already have made a move at head coach and could look at a completely different team if they overhaul this roster. They need to start clicking soon. The Panthers playing better than most expected early on, especially with no preseason and limited training camp opportunities. The Falcons giving up three more points than they're scoring so far this season. These two saw each other just over two weeks ago in week five. The Panthers on top at the end, 23-16. to After an early lead for the Falcons in the first quarter, Atlanta saw Carolina score 20 straight points to take a 20-7 to lead into half. It was all field goals after the break. That loss pushed Atlanta to make a change at head coach and general manager. Both Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitrov let go after the Falcons' first 0-5 start since 1997. Team president Rich McKay stepping in to oversee the football operations side. Defensive coordinator Raheem Morris has led Atlanta to a 1-1 one -one record since taking over as interim head coach. More on Morris and the Falcons in a bit, but let's start with the Panthers, who lost two out the gate, then reeled off three straight wins before falling in close contests to the Bears and last Sunday against the Saints. Three and four overall, not a bad start when considering it's a completely new coaching staff. Matt Rule replacing Ron Rivera in the offseason. Two new coordinators. Joe Brady comes over from LSU to run the offense. Phil Snow, the new defensive coordinator, despite COVID limiting their ability to build chemistry, Carolina has surprised a bunch of people. Now Rule and Company looking for a 4-4 four four start with a win tonight. 
Win and get in. Hey there, I'm Aaron Chuslock. The most hyped conference championship of the weekend. The Tigers looking for redemption for their one loss this season. All the storylines talked about leading up to kickoff between Clemson and Notre Dame. The only one that truly matters, a Tigers win sends them back to the college football playoff. The streak of sixes. Dabba Sweeney and the Tigers in search of their sixth straight conference title and a return trip to the playoff for the sixth consecutive season. Pick it up in the first quarter. Notre Dame gets the ball first and comes out hot. Then third and eight, James Skalski. Remember, he didn't play in the first meeting. A big sack on Ian Book forces the field goal. Jonathan Doerr does drill the 51-yarder, and the Irish take a 3-0 lead. Tigers' first possession, Trevor Lawrence looking for Cornell Powell here. Good play by the defense. Gets tipped and then picked by Kyle Hamilton. But Notre Dame will miss a chip shot field goal after that. And when you don't convert against Clemson, it's almost impossible to beat them. Ensuing drive, the Clemson offense clicks. Lawrence to Amari Rogers, and no one's in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. 67 yards to the house. The Tigers take the lead, seizing momentum. 17-3 now late in the second. Tigers just trying to get into field goal position here. Going for it on fourth and short. Travis Etienne splits the heart of the defense, then takes the heart from Notre Dame. ETN, 44 yards, sprint for six. Tigers take a 24-3 lead into half. Tigers defense continues to clamp down on Book, trying to get something going here in the third. Miles Murphy leads a pack of Clemson defenders. Notre Dame forced to punt again. Clemson's offense now looking for more as well. Lawrence. E.J. Williams, the freshman, an unreal one-handed catch. Clemson's rolling again, and then Lawrence breaks Notre Dame's back with his legs. Right up the gut, 34 yards to pay dirt. Lawrence letting the fight in Irish know who the kings of the ACC are once again. Over 400 total yards, three total touchdowns. Lawrence, your championship MVP. Another Gatorade bath for Dabo Sweeney, a tradition at this time of year. The Tigers cruise to the conference title once again, 34-10, to the final. They've won the past four conference championships by a combined score of 176 to 40. Now it's just a question of who they play next and where they'll start their sixth consecutive run in the college football playoff. Let's send it out sports anchor Amanda Keene, who joins us from Bank of America Stadium. This is a rematch that everybody was looking for after Clemson lost to Notre Dame earlier this season, but this time an ACC championship game was on the line. Now the Tigers came out in the first quarter and absolutely dominated from here on out. 34-10 to 10 was the final score, and they just won their sixth straight ACC championship. It was awesome, obviously, to get to play in the first, uh, first round with these guys. So just, you know, preparing these past two weeks, getting ready was a lot of fun. It felt like we just owned the game plan and as a team came together and we just gotten better every week. Uh, so it was really fun, obviously, to come out here. And, uh, knew we were prepared, but to go actually do it and perform well was, was awesome. We did an unbelievable job and uh, just really proud of these guys, man. I mean, that's a tenth win. And in any for 10 years in a row, and any time to win 10 games, any year is, is an unbelievable accomplishment. But to do it in this year is almost miraculous. It was a great, great win, uh, something that, you know, we came here to do, and uh, we got it done. Uh, so now for us, we're going to enjoy this tonight. Look forward to having a little pizza party tomorrow. And see what's next. The Tigers have done all that they can do at this point, and their fate is now in the hands of the college football playoff committee. Although after a win like that today, Aaron, I think it's going to be hard to keep them out of a semifinal. With the Tigers in Charlotte, I'm Amanda Keene, Fox Carolina Sports. Amanda, I'd have to agree with you elsewhere now. Ohio State wins their fourth straight Big Ten championship. Not a great game for Justin Fields, but star running back Trey Sermon getting the Buckeyes' single game record with 331 rush yards and two scores, carrying Ohio State to the Big Ten title and potentially a playoff spot in the 22-10 win over Northwestern. Iowa State, one of the teams trying to win their way into the playoff, rallied from a double-digit deficit to Oklahoma, but Brock Purdy picked off here by Trey Brown. Brown and Oklahoma wins their sixth straight Big 12 title, ending the Cyclones' playoff hopes. New Gamecocks coach Shane Beamer ends his time at OU with a Big 12 championship, 27-21, the final score there. SEC title game going on right now. Alabama trying to hold on to their top playoff spot, taking on Florida after a 7-7 start. Mac Jones tossing a couple touchdown passes to open a double-digit lead. Bama scores five touchdowns in their six first-half possessions. The Tide right now. 
now still rolling 35-24. And a couple NFL games going on as well, including the Panthers in Green Bay taking at Lambeau Field. The Packers scored the first three touchdowns, taking a 21-3 lead into the half. Teddy Bridgewater scrambled for a 13-yard score in the third. At last check, Panthers only down by one score if they can continue to rally, but it's 21-13, Packers in front. Shale? We'll begin with the Panthers, who take on a familiar face in a new place. Ron Rivera and the Washington football team, nine seasons calling the shots in Carolina. Remember, just two days after the Panthers lost to D.C. last season, Rivera fired from Carolina. Now a chance at some revenge against the black and blue while getting his new team to the playoffs. Rivera said it's all about the playoff push this week. He's not looking for revenge. A win would clinch the NFC East title. Pick it up in the first quarter. No score. Steven Sims muffs the punt here. And Brandon Zilstra, Johnny on the spot, recovers it in the end zone for the Panthers. Eight-yard touchdown. They'd be up 6 nothing after the missed point after. Second quarter now. Mike Davis from a yard out. The Gamecocks alum, over 1,000 yards from scrimmage this year. It's 13-0 Carolina. Later in the second, same score. Teddy Bridgewater, Robbie Anderson, 14-yard connection. It is 20-3 Panthers at halftime. Fourth quarter, Washington down 14, going for it on fourth and two. Dwayne Haskins sacked by Zach Kerr and Yatur Gross Matos for a loss of six yards. Football team turns it over on downs. Haskins gets benched. Under two minutes to go in the game, Tyler, he Tyler Heineke in for Washington. And Heineke connects with J.D. McKissick. The former Panthers quarterback for the 29-yard touchdown here, a bullet of a pass. Football team still trailing 20-3. to And then on the onside kick, D.J. Moore corrals it for the Panthers. And Carolina goes on to win it 20-13. to The black and blue leave the burgundy and gold feeling blue. I was disappointed, obviously. Uh, you can't turn the ball over. Um, you know, on special teams, you, you can't give up uh, a, a big, long run. Um, you know, you, you just can't do that. And, uh, you know, offensively, I, I, again, I, I think when you have an opportunity to put points on the board, you got to put them on the board. I think we did a great job of just executing the game plan. Uh, of course, you know, when you walk away from games, there are some things you want to improve on. But, you know, to win this league, we're, we understand how tough it is. So just going to enjoy this moment. You know, it wasn't always pretty at the end, but it was one we're proud of. You know, for us, um, you know, that was a playoff game for them. You know, they were fighting to go make the playoffs. So for us to step up in that type of an environment and win a game and win a game all the way through the end, um, I think it's a good step for us. Now 5-10 and will wrap up the regular season at home next Sunday against New Orleans, a game you'll see right here on Fox Carolina. To the Panthers, or to the Falcons, I should say now, once a popular pick to contend for the division, head into this week, losers of three straight, with just four wins total on their resume. Resume. They get the top team in football in Week 16, the defending Super Bowl champion Chiefs. Kansas City looking to clinch the number one overall seed in the AFC. Pick it up in the second quarter. We're still scoreless. And one of the reasons why, Grady Jarrett, the Clemson great, stops the Chiefs short of the first down here. But the Chiefs will go for it on fourth down. And KC's going trickery. The ball. Ends up in the hands here of Sammy Watkins. Clemson fans remember Watkins can throw it. Ill-advised pass here, though. Looking for Patrick Mahomes. Finds Keanu Neal. The Falcons' defense rising up to the occasion. Atlanta's offense responding as well. Matt Ryan shovel pass to former Gamecock. Hayden Hurst from five yards out opens the scoring just before half. The Chiefs finally answer Mahomes to his trusty tight end, Travis Kelsey. It's 7-all at halftime. Fourth quarter, Falcons down three. Matt Ryan. Laquan Treadwell, five-yard hookup. Could Atlanta pull off the upset? It's 14-10, but just over two minutes to go. Mahomes to the end zone. It's Clemson's A.J. Terrell. He looks like he picks it off, but it hits the ground. Terrell can't believe it. In the very next play, you can't give Mahomes second chances. To Marcus Robinson, 25-yard touchdown. The Chiefs get the lead. 14 seconds to go. Young Way Koo, 39 yards to tie it. That snaps a streak of 27 straight made field goals by Koo. Almost upsets, still count as losses. Falcons fall 17-14, now just 4-11 on the year.